staying science-minded and the five reasons I used to binge. And I'm going to go ahead and say that. I'm going to say used to binge and we'll call that hopeful thinking, right? Um, staying science-minded. Guys, this is important. And um, I am sharing this because this journey definitely towards weight loss, but also towards freedom from the grip of addiction. And I am not saying we'll be free from addiction in the sense that we will no longer be addicted. That's not even a goal of mine. I want to manage this diseased brain of mine. I want to manage my addiction and um, find ways to, to do that, find ways to cope. Um, so this journey, though, towards weight loss, towards freedom, it can be very, very discouraging at times. And um, that's why I like to tell people, stay science-minded. And here is what I mean by that. I mean... Um, think about the scientific method. The scientific method is um, some observation, hypothesis, experimenting, gathering data, then um, analyzing the data and coming to conclusions. So we can do that with our own behaviors. Um, I would like to find somewhere to sit that... Take a walk with me on the farm real quick. Okay, I think this is gonna work. Okay, so um, here's what I tell people, guys. Let's let's don't attach um, so much moral judgments to what we're doing. So much naughty or bad or awful or I feel so ashamed or blah 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 blah. No one with diabetes should feel that way. No one with mental health issues should feel that way. No one with diseases that um, that guys, whether you even did stuff on purpose or not to get them, because I'm pretty sure I got myself in this pickle. Yes, I'm high on the susceptibility scale. Yes, it's genetic, but I got myself addicted. Um, so even if we caused ourselves to end up diseased, we probably didn't mean to. We probably didn't want to. Let's let go a lot of, with, with the, a lot of, if not all of, the moral judgments. I tell people there are not good days and bad days. There are good days and data days. There are just days where we gather data about our own behavior. And then that's data that we can analyze and we can make changes and then come up with a new hypothesis, a new experiment, gather new data, and then compare that to the old data and just keep moving forward. I call it troubleshooting. We are troubleshooting. So it is important to stay science-minded so that we can stay motivated to move forward, right? So that we don't get discouraged. Um, you know, you, I'm just imagining, there's this field next to me. I'm just imagining like a three or four year old that's pretty good at walking and running and they take off running and, um, you know, they're going to trip and fall. If they receive encouragement versus discouragement, if they receive encouragement, it's okay, get back up if they trip and fall. Come on, come on, come on. They're going to keep running, scrapes and bruises and all. If we tell them, don't do that, stop. Ah, I tell people, give your kids do's, not don'ts. When you give them a don't, you narrow, you narrow out one thing. Don't write on the couch, they'll write on the wall right? Give kids do's. Um, tell them what you want them to do, not what you not what you want them to don't, not what you don't want them to do. And that's what we're doing with ourselves with Bright Line Eating. We are telling ourselves what to do. We're telling ourselves what to eat every day. We're telling ourselves um, what food choices, what, um, what food categories, my mother-in-law just pulled in. I think she's probably dropping my kids off. So stay science-minded. Stay objective. Objective is looking from the outside in. Imagine that you're watching a friend of yours with some strange behaviors. You wouldn't be so judgmental towards them as you are towards yourself. Or maybe you would be. But let's let's don't be. Let's stay science-minded and look and think, I wonder why they're doing that. I wonder why they did that. Let's do that about ourselves and ask ourselves, I wonder why. I wonder why I'm doing this thing. I wonder why I binge at night. I wonder why I turn to this. I wonder why I overdo it on this and not that. I wonder why I break this boundary but not that boundary. Um, continue to troubleshoot and ask yourself and gather the data and stay science-minded, stay objective, okay? Stay um, as much as possible. Try and imagine you're looking from the outside in. 
And I want you to know that this is a, an absolute process. So this is a process of much like after someone's had a stroke or, um, oh, you know, just any kind of rehabilitation. This is learning to walk again. This is learning to live again. This is learning to live without those crutches. So I noticed early on that I used to binge for many different reasons. And after I would make my way through and stop binging for this reason, well, then another reason might bubble up. So under the, um, under the umbrella of habit, there are four reasons I used to binge. To cope with life. To connect with those around me because I was hungry and because of hormones so cope connect hunger and hormones those were four of the main reasons that I used to binge um, but I just want to extend this encouragement to stay science-minded there are not good days and bad days there are good days and data days and on the days that we do things that we don't want to do again well then let's just analyze them let's just look at them let's reflect um, when we're being objective, we give ourselves space and grace to fall down. And falling down is absolutely part of this. It's just part of it. Just accept it. It's part of the human experience. No one ever made it to Mount Everest and got interviewed and said, how did it go? And they said, perfectly smooth. No, absolutely not. We're hiking. We're hiking. And that's why it's great to hike together because we can say, hey, look out for that. Or, uh oh, she fell down. Grab her. You know, we're just, we're just doing this together. Um, I know you don't expect perfection. None of us would probably say that we do. So let's don't be surprised when it looks quite imperfect. Am I right? <laughs> so again, good days and data days. Stay science-minded. Um, take off running. Just take off running. Trusting. There's a good chance you'll trip and fall, but you'll be able to handle it. So let me make sure that I said everything I wanted to say here. Um, I got my little book. No, it's not a bookmark. It's my husband's tag off his jeans and I scribbled down what this video was going to be about. Oh yes. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Why? Why do we want to do this? I'll tell you why. To stay out of the, sh hmm. the cycle of shame. The cycle of shame. The shame cycle. So ironically, when we um, shame feel shame and shame ourselves and no, 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 naughty, naughty, naughty. You should not have done that. Ah, I've got a bunch of like negative stuff going on in our heads. Um, that makes us feel bad. And then ironically, we turn to our crutches, sugar, flour, caffeine, alcohol, whatever it is, um, to feel better. And then we feel bad about that. So we turn to it to feel better. What a vicious cycle. We want to get out of that. Guilt is good. Shame is not. Guilt is from God. Guilt is a guide back to him. The Holy Spirit can convict us and make us feel guilty about something. We might want to repent and not do that again. But shame is isolating. Shame is from the enemy. He would love for us to isolate and self-destruct. He'd love that. Um, so let's stay science-minded. Let's don't get caught up in good days and bad days. Let's get, um, let's just get excited. Put on your little nerd emoji glasses. And let's get excited about the data. Let's just look at what we're doing. Look at our behaviors. Very specific ones. And by the way, there are going to be decisions you make and um, turns you take on this journey that are very, very pivotal. That, I, Like I've said before, we're trying to turn. You might, be, you might turn one little degree or you might, make, you might turn 30 degrees. There are decisions that you can make that would take care of a bunch of behaviors all at once. You know, um, uh, for instance, if you had, a, you know, some wild and crazy dog that you adopted from a shelter that was tearing up your house and you realized I cannot manage this animal. Um, there might be 50 things going on in your house that were stress stressful, but just to rehome him um, to where s s uh, some home that would be a better fit, that would take care of a bunch all at once. Um, there are things that we can do on our weight loss journey that might take care of a bunch of behaviors all at once. Um, but typically, and this is sort of painstaking, but it's important and worth it, you guys. It's just worth it to go through these behaviors. Um, we're going to be looking at one behavior at a time. And I often have you all comment to me or email me or I just um, am, am 
often helping people troubleshoot with one particular behavior. So um, consider, oops, I, for, I forgot. I forgot a very important reason that I used to binge. Five reasons to cope, connect, because of hunger, because of hormones, and also to rebel to rebel against God's orders for me. You know, I've said before, this is a parent-child relationship and there are times he asks me to do things or not do things that I don't want to not do or that I do want to do. And um, there's been times where I just have rebelled. I trust that he gave me Bright Line Eating as um, a prescription. It's it's my medicine to take care of this particular issue. Um, and there has just, there's been times where I just wanted to rebel against that. I didn't want to take my medicine. I didn't want to follow his orders. So. I used to binge to cope, connect, because of hunger, because of hormones, and to rebel. Maybe, look at those, look at those five. If you're doing something that seems odd to you, um, just look at it science-minded, right? Just look at it kind of like, hmm, wonder why I'm doing this. Um, I might try this experiment, or I might just analyze the data, take in the data, and um, and guys, data is not just numbers. Data is, there's anecdotal data. There's there's all sorts of data that we can gather. There's all sorts of ways that we get information about um, ourselves and our own behaviors. So if there's something that you're doing that you just don't want to do, avoid the temptation to feel bad about it. Consider it data. Look at it. When my husband and I are... Um, disagreeing or arguing whatever I say all right let's put it on the table and let's just get it out and put it on the table with no judgment here it is on the table once it's on the table let's sort through it so get it out put it on the table write it down look at it on a piece of paper and think why might I be doing this am I doing it to cope with life to connect with others um, am I hungry if I if you're hungry add food to your plan um, or make peace with the hunger you know it's probably a temporary situation especially if you're in the weight loss program and the weight loss plan. You won't be there forever. Um, am I using, am I using, am I doing this behavior to cope, connect? Am I hungry? Is this hormonal? Maybe we talked about ghrelin quite a bit. If it's late at night, I used to be a big time nighttime binger, big time nighttime binger. Um, is it hormonal or is it, am I just rebelling? Am I just being rebellious? Am I just saying, okay, God, I'll do this. I'll do it. I surrender 99%. 1% I'm going to do it my way. Um, and we just don't want that. That does not give us the freedom we're after. So I love you guys. Um, let's stay science minded, right? Um, let's think hypothesis. Hmm. Let's think, um, observation experiments. Um, I love how Susan Pierce Thompson talks about, we all have done our own research. She's done plenty of her own. Um, Let's gather data. Let's analyze the data and let's do something productive with it. Um, like either celebrate it and say, yes, this is what I was after, or I need to make some changes if I want to get what I'm after. So um, let's stay science minded. Those are the five reasons, not four. Those are the five reasons that I used to binge. Um, and if I binge again, they will, it will likely be I don't even know, maybe one of those, maybe a sixth reason. Maybe I have other reasons that I will continue to work through one behavior at a time. Um, that's it. I love you all. Poodles? Anything? That's not a poodle. Poodle? Border collie? <gasps> I'm so glad to see you two getting along. That is Clyde and he herds, okay, Clyde the border collie herds our poodles. Sometimes he's too mean to them, but I guarantee you what he's doing right now is herding Jubilee. I bet you he is keeping her in his sight and not letting her go anywhere he doesn't want her to go. Jubilee, come here. Come here. Come here, Jub. Come here. I want to see if Clyde's going to have an issue with you walking over here. Clyde. Is she staying where you want her to stay? Jubilee, do you need a break from Clyde? Clyde, you're a hard worker. Okay, guys, that's it for now. I love you all. We will talk again soon. And guess what? This whole time we've been talking, do you know what that is? Cow poop. That is poop from a cow. <laughs>